brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that sends 5% of your monthly plan price to your favorite charity. No contracts, nationwide coverage, risk-free guarantee. Learn more at CharityMobile.com. A story got lost in the headlines this week because of all the news surrounding Bishop Strickland and Father James Altman, as well as the fallout from his Mongolia trip. Cardinal Des- Designate Archbishop Victor Manuel Fernandez, the new prefect for the Dicastery the Doctrine of the Faith, gave an exclusive interview with the National Catholic Register. He did what you might expect. He danced a bit around previous statements he made, including brushing aside the kind of weird books he'd written in the past. He trashed traditional Catholics by insinuating that we're basically heretics, you know, the usual stuff we expect from someone who speaks on behalf of Paca Papa Francis. But there are a few things he says that really gave the game away. The agenda of the Synod of Francis isn't to change the faith, but it is to change the faith. In the interview, he basically contradicts himself, and he does so by inventing something new. The Doctrine of Francis, whatever that is. Francis is one step closer to becoming a divine oracle, at least in the minds of the hyper-ultra-uber-modernists. And we see the thinking on full display with the Vatican's new doctrine chief, who apparently thinks that the doctrine can change, while insisting it doesn't. Are you confused? Let's see if we can clear it up for you a bit here. Headline from the National Catholic Register. Exclusive. Archbishop Fernandez warns against bishops who think they can judge, quote, the doctrine of the Holy Father. The Vatican's new doctrinal chief also discusses his openness to James Martin blessings, shares his thoughts on the German Synodal Way, and explains his approach to safeguarding doctrine. Okay, so it's worth noting here that the register is the print arm of EWTN, and while many in the Francis Splainer side of things in the online debate world will tell you that EWTN and NCR are anti-Francis, that's not the case as this exclusive interview will show. It should be obvious that if the Register is getting an exclusive interview with one of the most important members of the Roman Curia, then EWTN isn't viewed with as much suspicion in Rome as we had been led to believe. And that's especially true given that one of EWTN's theologians just accepted a position in the Roman Curia as a lay member of the Marian Pontifical Academy, though I have gotten some assurances from somebody who is an insider at EWTN that everything is fine with that appointment, and I'll take their word for it. But with all that I haven't been said, Archbishop Fernandez begins with what is actually a mostly good answer to a question. What does the phrase modernizing the church actually mean to him? And I say mostly good because he doesn't quite ever answer the question in a way that dispels the overall fear that many Catholics have, that Francis is going to make the church more in line with the secular world. Quote, I would never use the term modernize to apply to the church, because it is a category more appropriate to corporations or other institutions. It does not apply to a supernatural reality, such as the church, which has eternal elements. Recent popes have used the word reform in the belief that there are aspects of the church that can change, but always without renouncing a permanent humus, uh, the Latin word for soil or ground, that goes beyond the passing of time, the different epochs and the superficial aspects of the world. The expression modernizing the church could lead us to the error of subsuming the permanent and ever new richness of the church, including the gospel, into the framework of a given epoch, in this case, modernity, which will also pass away as all other epochs have passed away. In short, the expression modernizing the church makes no sense to me. End quote. And he's actually right there. The term modernizing the church makes no sense because the church is a timeless institution. The problem is that he has a track record of then trying to update the church's timeless teachings to be more in line with the secular world. Case in point, did you know that much of Amor Laetitia's most controversial passages are known to have been written by Fernandez and had been written in early draft form well before Francis was even elected to his current post? Did you know that? It's true. Amor Laetitia was an attempt to update the church's teachings to the values of the world, even if Fernandez doesn't want to admit that. He takes what is basically an almost strong start to an interview and then shows his true colors, though. He's asked about what they call the recent magisterium and how it differentiates from the older magisterium. 
Instead of answering that question, we get an attack on traditionalists and on Cardinal Burke, as well as on the more radical modernist groups. Quote, When we speak of obedience to the magisterium, this is understood in at least two senses, which are inseparable and equally important. One is the more static sense of a, quote, deposit of faith, which we must guard and preserve unscathed. But on the other hand, there is a particular charism for the safeguarding, a unique charism, which the Lord has given only to Peter and to his successors. In this case, we are not talking about a deposit, but about a living and active gift, which is at work in the person of the Holy Father. I do not have this charism, nor do you, nor does Cardinal Burke. Today, only Pope Francis has it. Now, if you tell me that some bishops have a special gift of the Holy Spirit to judge the doctrine of the Holy Father, we will enter into a vicious circle where anyone can claim to have the true doctrine. And that would be heresy and schism. Remember that heretics always think they know the true doctrines of the church. Unfortunately today, not only do some progressives fall into this error, but also, paradoxically, do some traditionalist groups. End quote. There you have it, folks. Some traditionalists are heretics because they, or we, can judge the Holy Father. <laughs> but it gets better. I mean, did you catch what he said there? The doctrine of the Holy Father. What does that even mean? Individual popes don't have their own doctrine. The church has a doctrine, and it's not supposed to change. It can develop, but it doesn't change. But popes don't have their own doctrine. We hear this sometimes when someone waxes eloquently about the magisterium of Francis and the magisterium of Benedict. There is really only one magisterium. Individual papal claimants don't have their own magisterium, regardless of how much their sycophantic allies insist that they do. We saw Cardinal Cherney say this about the issue of people who tend to move from one state or country to another and how that issue was a sacrament to Francis that was part of his magisterium said that earlier this year. And it makes no sense unless you treat individual popes that you like as divine oracles, which they're not supposed to be. They don't reveal new doctrine. They teach the faith, the correct errors. They reprimand sinners and govern the church for Christ. That's what they do. They don't have their own magisterium. But it gets worse. Here, Fernandez characterizes the faith that is to be preserved by the pope as not a deposit of faith, which would be basically a static thing in its most fundamental meaning, but as something living. I've said it before, and I will say it again here. Whenever you see someone talking about a living faith, a living deposit of faith, that's a red flag. They don't mean their faith is vibrant. They mean it's evolutionary. They always mean that the faith can change in some way. Living things change, after all. It's like all those people who talk about a living constitution, which always means that the constitution endorses unconstitutional things when you really drill down into what they're talking about. Don't trust them or anyone who thinks that way to preserve the faith in a meaningful sense. Which is especially troubling here because Fernandez's main job is to preserve and teach doctrine on behalf of Francis. As an example of this, we have the push for what we have to call here the James Martin pairing, which are a parody of the sacrament of holy matrimony. Fernandez has said that the church could conceivably bless such arrangements. And he clarifies what he means in the interview that he means the secular recognition of such pairings, that people who went through a secular process could then have their arrangements blessed by the church, but not weddings in Catholic churches. That's not all that much better. That just means the church is taking a stance of indifference to evils in the world, which the church can't do. But we get another example of erroneous thinking from the doctrine chief. He's asked about changing doctrine. He claims the church doesn't fully understand the gospel. Think about that for a moment. The church, whose principal job is to proclaim the gospel of Christ, who claims to have the fullness of the faith and to bring souls into the church so that they might be saved, apparently doesn't fully understand the gospel. What utter claptrap. He uses as an example of his thinking how the church allegedly changed its stance on involuntary servitude and a few other practices, which misrepresents what the church believed and taught in the past. As I said before, on the servitude question in a previous video, the church led the way in the abolition of that practice. You see, prior to leading the way on it, the church accepted that the practice was a given in society at the time, but made rules for how those in that situation were to be treated, while working to lay the groundwork for the elimination of the practice. 
the fact that a senior official of the Roman Curia would repeat the propaganda of the church's enemies on this issue is quite disturbing, frankly. Let's quote him. Let's go back to him, though. Quote, True doctrine can only be a light or guide for our steps, a sure path and a joy for the heart. But it is clear that even the church does not yet fully grasp the full richness of the gospel. In some areas, it has taken centuries for the church to make explicit aspects of doctrine which at other times she did not see so clearly. The doctrine does not change. The gospel will always be the same. Revelation is already settled. But there is no doubt that the church will always be tiny in the midst of such an immensity of truth and beauty and will always need to continue to grow in her understanding. End quote. When you say the church doesn't understand the gospel, there's a massive problem. It's just simply as that. But what do you think? Am I making too big a deal out of this? Do you think the church doesn't fully grasp the gospel? If so, how can the church claim to have the fullness of the faith? Let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. Because I'm very curious. Is this really just a matter of, oh, there are some parts of the faith that need to be clarified and will be so by future declarations and definitions of popes and councils? Or is he just making excuses for the things we're going to come see here when the synod gets done with its infernal work. Let me know what you think this all means in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps a lot too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.